A very good morning to all of you. My name is Abhishek Negi and today I'm going to talk about Hart and Fuller debate, a very important yet sometimes become technical uh, if we do not pay much attention to the propositions of jurisprudence. So Hart and Fuller debate is actually, if we see deeply, are based on two schools of thoughts. And it is actually a debate about two schools of thought. On one hand, we have positive school and on the other hand, we have natural school. So be before talking about Hart and Fuller debate and uh, what, what are the con contents of the debate, let's start with these school of thoughts. So this debate, this debate is actually about what the law is and the what and what the law ought to be and or what law should be. So starting with the positive school of thought, which bases its premise on the uh, argument about what law is. For example, one of the most famous and a champion of English school of jurisprudence is Austin and he defined law that is that law is the command of the sovereign backed by sanctions. That means law is the command. It is coming from the from the king because not in these times, but when the law was evolving, the dominance of kingship was there. That means there was a saying that king can do no wrong or king is the fountain head of justice. So if king is the fountain head of justice and if the words of king, king becomes the law, we have seen that uh, whatever the king utters will become the law. And that is why the Austin bases its premise that the law is nothing but a command of the sovereign. Command of the sovereign. Sovereign here is basically the ruler or the king. He also added that law is the command of the sovereign backed by sanction. That means there has to have a sanction. And if it's, it, it has been backed by sanction, that means the subjects are under the duty to follow that command. Here, there are many uh, uh, propounders of uh, positive jurisprudence and English jurisprudence. There are many uh, philosophers who supported actually this school of thought. But this definition of Austin or the positive notion of uh, uh, jurisprudence, the positive understanding of law has many lacunas or are sometimes become a little problematic. For example, basically the first problem is actually that the here the sovereign is positing or the sovereign, the command is, has been positioned or posited by the sovereign. Now, if a sovereign has said something or a law has been made by a sovereign, the positive school will say that we will not see whether that law is right or wrong or whether that law is just or unjust. We will just say that whatever the king has uttered, the whatever the sovereign has made the rule or the law, it is the law. We will not dig deep into that law and we will not say that whether to accept that law or not. We will just say that it, the law has, has been made and the subjects they have to follow the law. Now, we have witnessed the rule of Hitler in the world. So, this kind of notion, the, the, this school actually supports the Hitler made laws, Hitler made constitution, where if a sovereign has made something, no matter it is how much it is unjust, how no matter how much it is biased, no matter which uh, object it is serving, the subjects need to follow that law. So this is the basic uh, lacuna or the basic criticism with regard to the positive school of thought. Now on one hand we have positive school of thought which only sees the law from the outer perspective and says that if a sovereign has made something and it is backed by sanction that means that is a law. But on the other hand we have a natural school of jurisprudence which says that an unjust law is no law or which position is uh, its understanding on the premise of 
universal reason or natural reason now the naturalist school says that we will not see the law from the outer perspective or we will not accept the law simply because it has been uttered or it has been commanded by the sovereign we will see whether that the law has actually reasoned by the command that means if, if there is a reason proper reason and reason is not dependent on the reason of the command uh, of the commander or the reason of the of mr suppose for example the king or nobles or few people but we'll see the reason as a universal reason that is why sometimes they use natural reason just like the nature the nature treats everyone equally uniformly and universally if there is a uh, uh, if there is cold for example in winter season we feel cold so the winter is same for all it does it does not happen that somebody is feeling cold and somebody is not feeling cold just like this sunlight the sun rises from the east for everyone likewise the natural law says that we will see we will introspect it or we will uh, inspect the law from the perspective of the universal reason or natural reason so this is the basic premise that means that if we will see that the reason is actually biased or there is not a proper reason universal universal reason we will challenge the law and we will say that this law is actually unjust it is uh it should not be there that is that is why it it says that what the law should be what the law ought to be they do not simply accept the law as commanded by the sovereign they will inspect it from the lens of the reason that is sometimes called morality because morality is changing ever changing very subjective and this morality is not morality of a community of or a person or a commander this morality is universal morality or universal reason so we will weigh the law from the lens of the universal morality or the from the lens of the universal reason so on one hand we have law which is simply put by the commanded and you have to the subjects they have to follow the law on the other hand we have law which has been has which has to be has to come from the scrutiny of the reason universal reason or universal morality and if it satisfies the universal morality or universal reason then that law would be accepted so these are the two basic premise of positive law which say what the law is and the natural law which says what the law should be or what the law ought to be and the reason why i am explaining to you before talking about hart and fuller debate is because it is very important to know the basics of why the why this debate is so popular this debate is actually premised on these two notions or the schools of thought so now coming of the hart since i have already talked about one of the major uh, champion of uh, english jurisprudence which which is austin hart has actually not uh, accepted the austin's definition fully it does not say it does not talk, uh, the hart does not talk about actually the uh, uh, command of the sovereign thing but it says that law is the uh, system of rules and what is this the system these systems are actually divided into two parts the first is the primary rule primary rule is actually duty imposition rules for example the primary rule will say that uh, jumping off red lights is punishable so this is the primary rule it imposes the duty on the subjects so almost 90% of the law if you see in india are actually according to hart is primary rules secondary rule are the rules of recognition rules of recognitions are actually the backbone backbone of the system because the the secondary rules are actually recognizes the primary rule primary rule is the duty imposition which imposes the duty on the subject 
and why people accept that duty because heart says that just like kingship or the custom people have the understanding of accepting those rules that is why they are primary rules they imposes the duty on the subject and subject accept that rule just like kingship jaise raja ko accept kiya jata hai generally customs ko accept kiye jate hain waise hi primary rules ko accept kiya jata hai isiliye wo primary rules hain in secondary rule secondary rules are the rules of recognition which which are actually why i'm saying it is the backbone because it actually we, we know that law is is dynamic in nature law is ever changing and there there is nothing called static law law cannot be static and these primary rules cannot be static in the dynamic world so how we can change that law how we can amend that law through the secondary rules which which provides the recognition to the primary rule so on one hand we have primary rules which imposes the duty and on the other hand we have secondary rules which are actually uh, puts the dynamism in the in the primary rule thing so for example if we have a rule for ex- called uh, jumping of red light would punishable the secondary rule will say yes it is punishable but we'll amend it for example before uh motor motor vehicles act amendment we have jumping of uh, red lights uh, uh, if somebody jumps the red light suppose there is a fine of 50 rupees suppose there is a fine of 50 rupees but we have witness that the society are not following this rule properly and people are not okay with paying 50 rupees so the secondary rules which are the rules of recognition to the primary rules they have seen that the primary rule is not being followed by the people properly that is why they amended the primary rule and they said okay now the fine would be instead of 50 it's it is 5000 now we will see that if people will obey that law that rule then the secondary rule would be and the primary rule be settled but if this primary rule of increasing the uh penalty of from 50 to 5000 if it, it, it does not follow then again the secondary rule will come into the picture that is rule of recognition and again it will amend the primary rule so on one hand we have primary rule which imposes a duty and on the other hand we have secondary rule which are the rules of recognitions which uh, through which we can amend the primary rules that is why we i have said that it is the backbone of the so, to, to 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 the whole system as well as the primary rule now having said that if we see from the hearts perspective we have witness that on one hand we have primary rule and on the other hand we have secondary rule and heart being a positivist that means he does not believe in morality he does not supports the idea of morality and being a positivist uh, uh, school uh, person the heart says that believes in what the law is that means jo law hai whatever has been posited by the uh, commander or the sovereign that would be a rule or the law but here heart has actually uh, threw the morality or threw the reason from the doors and he let it enter or he let the morality enter from the window why i am saying this because if you see the secondary rules secondary rules which are rules of recognition is actually serving the universal morality or the universal reason since law is a dynamic and to provide this dynamic nature to the rules secondary rule is actually what they are actually coinciding with the universal morality because universal morality is what it changes from time to time for example if i put the understanding of heart in today's uh, era in india i can say that for example uh, uh, section 377 of ipc homosexuality uh, is prohibited is punishable but the, the primary rule, rule that is article uh, section 377 which says that a homosexuality is punishable but we have seen from time and again that we have witnessed that in india also say section 377 has been watered down 
through what through secondary rule okay so the secondary rule that is the which is which is actually coping up with the change in the understanding or change in the morality of the people change in the reason of the people the primary rule is also changing that that means that in the definition and the understanding of heart also the moral the morality is seeping in the, the morality is coming into the picture not from the front door but from the back door so the morality is coming and that is why it is one of the criticism of hart's understanding that on one hand he is saying he is not supporting the morality or the universal reason but on the other hand it is actually just 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 like changing the name of morality in the name of secondary rules through secondary rules it is actually bringing the morality into the picture and that is what uh, lone fuller also said fuller contradicted the hart's uh, idea that is that this rule of uh, prime this primary rule that is all or nothing uh, fashion has been uh, given by hart it says that whether primary rule has to be followed or not to be followed that means if the law is there that means it has to be followed this cannot be is is, is actually not a practical approach to the law and he says that the these rules he accepted that rules should be there and but he says that in these rules we need to put inner morality to it that means in these rules we need to put morality we need to put the reason for that and that is why he gave the principle or he he, he gave he introduced three uh, eight uh, basic inner morality principles to it so the first principle would is law must be in the form of rules he accepted that i already said that he accepted the 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 rules so he said that obviously law has to, must be in the form of rules for example we have in india also there may be have we have many many rules to conduct the uh, the actions of the human beings the second notion he said that those rules must be published for example in criminal law we have seen that there is a uh, legality principle that is nullum pina sine lege or nullum crimen sine lege meaning thereby that no law without penalty or no crime without legality that means if in india i am talking about there is a criminal law it has to be published so that it has to be understood and it has to be known to the subjects for example murder is a crime in india and why i can say that murder is a crime in india because it is published it is written it is published where it is firstly it, it has to be published by the gazette in the gazette of india gazette of india and after the gazette of india i have seen that in indian penal code section 300 talks about murder so murder is a crime here for example uh, suppose that wearing a blue shirt is a crime in india if i say can the parliament make this law not going that whether it is reasonable or or not simply i am saying that if suppose for example today the parliament of, parliament of india it says that blue shirt is a crime and abhishek you have uh, you were i have seen that you were wearing a blue shirt in one of your uh, videos so you you will be punished can the parliament say this no why because number 1 when i was wearing this it has not been published that means it has not been known uh, to me and since it has not been known to me i cannot be put behind the bars so this is the another understanding of eight uh, inner morality principles of fuller the third would be that retroactive retroactive rules should not be abused that means if the parliament or the sovereign is making a rule retroactive that means suppose for example today i am wearing a blue shirt and tomorrow a rule comes and says that that the application of this rule will start from 2021 that whosoever has he whosoever was wearing blue shirt 
from suppose January 1st, 2021 will be punished. This is what retroactive, retro piche se, retroactive, not prospective, retroactive application. So if it, ha it has been uh, abused, the retroactive application of the rule has been abused, that means the inner molarity is failing. Fourth would be rules must be understandable. This is one of the most important rule which I could even witness today also because many a times there are many judgments of the Supreme Court where it is not very much uh, comprehensible by the comprehended by the by the layman of India. That is why there is a, again a school uh, of thought is actually developing so that it is saying that the language of the Supreme Court or the language of the law should be made so simple that it should be understandable by every person. Every layman should be, uh, the law should be understandable to every layman. And that is why uh, the Fuller also based its premise on that, that uh, if, you, if a sovereign is publishing a rule, the rule must be understandable. That means the, the wording should be lucid and to the to the point and very simple in language the fifth one is actually the rule must be must not be in con in contradictory in nature that means suppose today uh, the parliament or the sovereign they have made a law suppose for example jumping red light is punishable tomorrow the parliament says that jumping yellow light is punishable and day after tomorrow again parliament says that okay uh, green light, jumping of green light is also punishable. So, in a way, they are contradicting their their own rule. So, th this should be avoided. We have many a times we have seen in India also that they are, for example, they are contradictory rules. For example, in today also, for example, section 309 of IPC is there, which says that um, uh, attempt to suicide is punishable. So, attempt to suicide is punishable under section 309. And if we see the Mental Health Act, Section 115, which says that if somebody has been found attempting to uh, take his or her life, it will be accepted that that person would be suffering from mental uh, illness and he or she would not be treated under Section 309. So on one hand, we have Section 309. On the other hand, we have Section 115. They are contradictory in nature. That is why the Supreme Court also they ask the uh, the uh, the stand of uh, the government of India from the Solicitor General. So th this this should be avoided. The because it fails the inner morality. It fails the re inner reasoning of the law. Now the the sixth rule would be the rule must not. Uh, require the conduct beyond the power of the affected person that means the the rule should be reasonable to the subjects for example if i put uh tax uh, 50 percent tax on uh, the bpl card holders so here the rule is actually failing the inner morality why because if i'm putting 50 percent tax tax on the BPL card holders, they will not be able to f follow this rule because the proportion of their income or the burden which they can actually, uh, financial burden which they can bear is actually not reasonable. So this also should be avoided. The another uh, understanding of uh, rule would be that the rule must not be change so frequently for example today i made some law tomorrow i change it and day after tomorrow i again introduce another law so the frequent change in the law is actually is also very problematic for the uh, subjects uh, of the of the state and that is why it should be avoided because again the reasoning the 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 reason the, the inner reasoning or the inner morality is actually uh, not uh, is actually failing in these kind of rules. Another uh, uh, rule of uh, inner morality would be that there should be a congruence between the rules announced and the rules applied. And in India, we have seen that many times it is not 
followed uh, properly why because law says something and the application the execution because we have two different bodies one we have legislature which makes the law and another which is executive which implements the law so there is a there should not be a much difference or rather no difference between the application and the announcement that, that means what whatever the law has been announced should be exactly followed in the way which which uh, the legislature has actually announced so this is also a very important principle so this these are the eight basic notion of uh, inner morality given by loom fuller and if we fulfill those eight uh, these eight principles of inner moral morality according to fuller we will introduce morality into the picture and that is why the the uh, the inclusion of morality or the inclusion of uh, reason into the picture is very important so that is why uh, in a way if we accept this that means uh, there could there should not be any distinction between what the law is and what the law ought to be as given by hart because uh, i have already said that hart uh, who was uh, who who had the notion of positive uh, law he believes in what the law is but in a way uh, not directly but rather indirectly he accepted the presence of morality the presence or the subjective nature of uh, uh, reasoning the universal uh, reasoning the natural morality and that is why uh, the understanding of hart has been criticized and says that it, the uh, he actually does not properly belongs to positive school because he ac indirectly accepted the uh, the uh, universal morality fuller said that uh, he accepted the, uh, the fuller being actually he is not a uh, naturalist but a realist but uh, even then also being a realist he said that uh, uh, the inclusion of inner morality in, in the definition of uh, heart would be uh, would would actually make sense because if we cannot Uh, except if we cannot uh, introduce inner morality then the rules made by the uh, sovereign would be failed and uh, would not suffice the purpose as it was it the, the as the uh, primary rules are the duty imposition rules and uh, the subject would not uh, fulfill his or her duty if we do not have a proper morality or we if we do not have a universal morality or a reason behind in a rule so with this i think uh, i have uh, explained to you all uh, about the the, the debate and uh, the uh, positive and the natural school uh, perspectives and uh, i'm not supporting anyone's school anyone's perspective i'm just simply putting that uh, there are certain uh, pros and cons and for every school uh, related to it for example positive schools have certain uh, pros with the, with their definition of law and natural school they have certain pros in their definition but there are certain lacunas and criticisms of all these schools both these schools naturalist as well as the positives thank you so much with this i think uh, i have uh, explained to you the about the debate as well as the schools of thought uh, see you in the next class thank you